My desk setup is a place that I spend the vast majority of my time around. I'm here constantly for my day job and then all the YouTube stuff that I do at night. So to me, it just has to look and feel great to be around. And to be honest, I wasn't getting that with this setup. There was a theme I aimed for, but I wasn't consistent. It's been a year, but this is what I came up with. Well, let's get started. This video is sponsored by Autonomous. Since working from home, I find myself wanting to stand up and stretch, but oftentimes I still need work to get done or I still have to focus on something that's on the computer. That's where the Autonomous Smart Desk Connect comes in. It's a standing desk that comes in a bunch of different color combinations, buttons for memorized positions, and can hold up to 350 pounds. But this standing desk also has the ability to be controlled through your smartphone. This is a desk setup I haven't shown on the channel yet because it's still a work in progress, but I really like being able to adjust the desk to how I'm working. If I wanna be able to stretch while I work, I can increase the height of the desk, and then my screen and keyboard are easily accessible again. If you're curious about autonomous standing desks or any of their other products, check out the link in the video description below. But now, back to the video. So let's talk about inspiration for this desk setup. I wanted a space that was dark and moody at night, but still looked great during the day. I wanted the overall vibe of the room to be consistent from wall to wall, and the desk needed to feel like it was meant to be in this room instead of being a mismatched setup of tech, kinda like it is here. And don't forget about the wires. Tech creates a ton of wire clutter. So I need a way to either hide the wires or remove them to make the space feel much more cleaner. I also need a way to properly organize my junk. What I quickly learned is that if you don't have easy to reach places to put stuff away, all of your crap just ends up on top of the desk cluttering your entire workspace. Also, my last setup was laptop focused. I wanted to be able to quickly swap between my work laptop and personal laptop. So quick swapping them was a priority. But now I primarily use my Mac Studio for my YouTube related tasks, and that's a desktop. So the setup has to be desktop centric, but able to quickly accommodate a laptop on the fly. So it's going to get a bit more complex there. So to sum up my goals for the setup, I'm trying to simplify the setup overall, but add functionality and add organization and making sure it stays more consistent with the theme that I had in mind originally. So what is the theme? We'll be doing basically grayscale, black, white, and gray, then bringing in color with some wood tones. Why black, gray, and white? Well, that's a pretty easy color to work with since a lot of tech are those colors, giving me a bit more flexibility while wood makes it feel a bit more natural and human again, instead of a high-tech stormtrooper or Tron type vibe. That's not my thing. If it's your thing, cool. But for me, nah. If there's any products I mentioned in this video that you end up wanting to check out, there will be links in the video description below. So to make sure this setup looks exactly like how I wanted, I ripped everything off of the desk and basically started from scratch with just the standing desk itself and the Grovemate desk shelf. I used this as my foundation. I liked both of these and wanted to continue using them and they matched my overall theme. From there, I tore down the felt right panels I installed on the walls because I felt the panels no longer fit the aesthetic I wanted in this room and the sound dampening benefits I was getting from them was not worth how they looked. They were thin and did help with sound, but not to the level that I liked. From there, I repainted the light gray wall a bright white. This color is Chantilly Lace in matte from Benjamin Moore. From there, I mounted two 32 inch 4K IPS LG Ergo monitors, which come with LG's fantastic Argo monitor arms to the desk. What I really like about these is the fact that they have USB-C for power, a USB hub, and display support all through this one single USB-C cable. This means you can plug in your laptop into this, charge it, and use the display and the built-in USB ports on the back of this monitor pretty much all at once. To make this monitor sound even more fantastic, it has cable management built into the stands, cleaning up the mess off my desk. Since these monitors are so big, and there's two of them, I like to angle them in a V type shape instead of being just straight up flat. In this V shape, I can see the corners a lot better in my peripheral, but when it's just straight head on flat, it makes it hard to see the corners without moving my entire head over. From there, I installed a Stream Deck XL and placed it right in the middle of the desk. I don't stream, but the Stream Deck makes a fantastic productivity tool. It provides me with macro and shortcuts to quickly do the things I want to do. If I want to open up the login screen for my NAS, I press a single button. Do I want to open a specific email address? 
I press a single button. If I want to control my Hue smart lights, I can do that with a press of a button. It also gives me media controls for different applications like Spotify, and I can even create hotkeys and macros for pretty much any software I use, like Final Cut Pro. I think it's been a great addition to this desk setup, but if I were to redo it, I'd probably get the standard size Stream Deck, because what I didn't know about the Stream Decks and I honestly should have done more research before purchasing the XL model, is that you can create more pages on the screen. So there's absolutely no need for the XL unless you're some super user with hotkey commitment issues and need all of those hotkeys. And the main machine powering this entire setup is the Mac Studio, which surprisingly fits right underneath the monitor. It's such a tiny machine that it was easy to find a place on this desk that made it look good, and it's been a fantastic main desktop machine. Right beside it is the Nomad Base Station charging pad. The reason I went with this specific charging pad is because it was the only one that really fit my needs. Charging pads come in so many different shapes and sizes and even at different angles, right? But what I needed was one that matched the theme of this setup, could charge two devices at once and have additional ports to charge other devices as well. And I really couldn't find any charging pad that met all that criteria except for this particular one. So while it is a bit pricey, the fact that it does everything that I need it to do and looks good doing it makes it pretty much worth it to me. From there, I started using the Audient Evo 4 audio interface to control my Shure SM7B because aesthetically, it matched the setup perfectly, but also because it has a smart gain mode which automatically sets the levels of the microphone based on how loud the audio is. The SM7B is mounted on a blue compass mic arm. I went with this one because it's minimal, cleans up the cables, and overall feels solid. The budget options off Amazon and even the popular Rode PSA1 look a bit busier with the gaps within the frame. So that's why I kind of preferred the more minimal look of the Blue Compass. Everyone who has the Mac Studio or owns monitors with built-in speakers knows that the audio coming out of those devices usually aren't the best. So I ended up purchasing the Kanto U2 speakers and they really leveled up the audio potential of the space compared to monitor speakers. Obviously these aren't the best, but still a huge upgrade. They also fit the look real nicely. These aren't end game speakers by any means, but I think it's a good stepping stone to when I eventually want to upgrade to something much better that will one day bankrupt me and make me sell everything. Now let's talk about the accessories I have laying around the desk. I'm using a Grovemade merino wool desk mat with some matching coasters and a leather mouse pad. Grovemade has some really cool stuff that just consistently fits my aesthetic, so there's a lot of their stuff here. On top of that, I have the Keychron K2, but I swapped the key switches for the Boba U4Ts. Alongside it is the Logitech MX3S, which is a pretty interesting mouse. The previous versions all had a higher pitched standard like click sound when you pressed on them, but this version has a more muted deeper sound, making it overall quieter and nicer to use in noise sensitive environments. Something I almost forgot, when I edit videos or edit thumbnails, I actually prefer to use a trackpad over a mouse because it makes it easier to zoom in and out and scroll sideways more accurately. The side scroll wheel on the MX Master 3S is good for web pages, but not good on a Final Cut Pro timeline. So I have an Apple Magic trackpad in black stored away in this Grove made tray made for this specific monitor stand. So confession time, I'm sort of a coffee addict, so I drink a lot of coffee in the morning. I've been trying to cut back, but it hasn't been successful. And because of that, on the top of my desk, there is a charging pad for my Ember mug on the right hand side. I'm honestly a bit mixed on the Ember brand and product as a whole because it's a nice mug with a lot of features, but it only holds up to 10 or 14 ounces of beverage depending on the size. And it's also not dishwasher safe. And you can't buy the mug separately. So it's always bundled with the charging pad and the battery doesn't last that long when it's off the charging pad. Overall though, it works, but honestly, it's really expensive for what it is. Maybe my addiction will be curbed if I just take off the charging pad and just let the coffee get cold. Between the monitors is a monopod mounted to the Grove made desk shelf that I primarily use to mount whatever item I need to use in that moment. For example, if I wanna use one of my cameras for a video call while I'm sitting at the desk, I can quickly swivel the monitor arms away and attach the camera onto the monopod. I can use it to hold lights, microphones, or whatever will fit on a standard threaded mount of a camera. It's come in handy many times. So now that you know everything this desk has to offer, 
How am I using it? Basically, while I love doing what I do on YouTube, I still have a full-time job that I do most of the week. And with that full-time job, I need to use the company issued laptop. But after work, I wanna be able to just use this space strictly for YouTube. So beneath this desk, I have a USB 3 switch with the stream deck, the mic and the speakers and whatever else I plug into it so that I can easily switch between the two computers connected to that switch. When I need to use a laptop with this setup, I place it under the desk shelf and take the USB-C cables hidden behind the stream deck and plug those in, giving whatever laptop I have plugged in full access to everything this setup has to offer. And whenever I wanna use the Mac Studio, I just switch to display input and press the switch and now everything's connected to the Mac Studio. Looking at this, you can probably tell the cables must have been a mess. And it was. I tried to make sure to tidy up the cables as much as possible by using these adhesive back straps and command strips to mount any power bricks underneath the desk. I spent probably a good three to four hours total just making sure all the cables were going to the right place and that the connections were working properly. It, it wasn't fun. This makes it look clean from the front and from the top while your mess of cables is organized and routed in the back of the desk and under it. If you're using a power strip with a standing desk, I highly recommend that you purchase a power strip with a long power cord so that you can mount the power strip underneath your desk. Because if you leave your power strip on the ground, you'll have to make sure the power cables for all of your stuff that is sitting on top of the desk is long enough to reach the ground when your standing desk is elevated or at its highest position. And even then you'd have a mess of cables on the ground all leading to your power strip. If you want it to look as clean as possible, you'll want to mount a power strip underneath the desk and plug things in from there. This way only one cable is visible from the ground to your desk, the power strip, unless of course you have an ethernet port as well. I found that the best way to mount power strips or even big and bulky power adapters for your monitors is to use command strips or adhesive Velcro. Those items ended up working the best for me. So with most standing desks, you end up with a nice minimal looking desk, but no real storage space to organize your pens, pencils, extra charging cables, whatever. So to mitigate this very specific issue, I added an Ikea Scatus pegboard to the wall over the monitors with some cups and hooks to hold anything that I don't want cluttering up the desk. Because this is behind the standing desk, I made sure that nothing will hit the pegboard when the desk is elevated to its highest height. To even out the other side of the wall, I put up a frame of a dissected iPhone 7 from Grid Studio. Grid Studio makes these cool dissected frames for smartphones and gaming handhelds too. So if you're interested in that, check them out. I, I have, I think I have their link in the description. If not, post in the comments and I can put that up too. They got some really cool stuff and honestly, I've been tempted to get more. Okay, so that's the current desk setup. It's been a work in progress for the last year, but I think it's complete now. And honestly, I really like how it looks and functionally, it's so much better now. And normally this is the part of the video where I think of things I would change about it if I could. And right now, honestly, I can't think of too many things I would do. Actually, maybe like a, a floor mat for my chair. The carpet is starting to lose all of its look because of the rolling back and forth I've been doing. It's not looking good. Okay, for real though, I, I hope this journey into my desk setup provides you with some inspiration for your own desk setups too. It's tough making sure everything goes to your plan and for it to look as good as you imagine it in your mind. But honestly, I'm pretty happy about how this all came out. Anyway, what do you personally think? Are you updating your own desk setups? What are you looking to do? Did this video help you with any ideas for yourself? What stuck out the most to you? Leave all that in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And well, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Bye.